Hello everyone, in this meeting, our material will be delivered by my group. Well, firstly, before we are going to discuss about our material, let us introduce ourselves. Firstly, in this group, there is Abigail Elsa Samitasitakar, and then there is also Alpha Kevin, Bait Putra Kirstanto, and the last is myself, Monica M. Damani. Well, today we are going to discuss about chapter 1, and the title is Introduction to Behave to behavioral accounting. So let's see about how many subtopics that we will have in this chapter. So we have six subtopics here. Firstly, we are going to talk about the traditional role of accounting and then we are going to talk about the behavioral dimension of accounting and at the last part we have to understand about perspective of human behavior. So just start from the number one the traditional role of accounting. Let us see what is in this part. Firstly, when we are going to talk about accounting behavioral, it's important and essential for us to know about the definition of accounting first. I think as a student comes from an accounting major, it's easy for us, right? So just like we read in the slide, it, it is a bit long definition. In short, we just can say that accounting is a, an information used by the external and internal user to do an economic decision, right? So here we also have to know about what is actually the international, the internal user and the external user. Well, the internal user is the organizations online and staff personnel who view, who view accounting rep reports as the foundation on which financing, investing, operating, and so on. And meanwhile, external is the group of people include such groups as stakeholder, creditor, labor, financial analysis, analysis, and government agencies, and so on. So that's all for the definition of accounting and what is the internal and external user. We continue to the next slide. Here, we are going to uh, figure out what is actually behavioral accounting. But firstly, we also have to know what actually the difference between managerial uh, management accounting and financial accounting because both of these things will be related to the definition of behavioral accounting. So in financial accounting, you can see here that it is uh, report to external user and the information presented is governed by generally accepted accounting principle or GAAP and the rules that pre prescribe the manner of presentation on the method of computation meanwhile here the management accounting is concerned with internal reporting so financial is for the external and managerial is for the internal user and Unlike the financial accounting in management accounting, the information presented to manager is not bound by GAAP, GAAP or generally accepted accounting principle. But here in this management accounting, it is governed by the information needs of the decision maker. Well, based on those explanation about financial accounting and management accounting, we can say that actually behavioral accounting is, uh, I mean, the, the, the domain of behavioral accounting, it includes the financial accounting and management accounting, which is this behavioral accounting also considered as the third major branch of accounting. And it is also concerned with the relationship between human behavior and of course with the accounting system and then in this subtopics we also have to know what is accounting information system i think for us this kind of thing is not unfamiliar because we have already get a subject on our previous semester right about accounting system accounting information system so just as the definition on the slide, accounting information system are built around the particular structure and business activities of the organization. A well-designed system includes procedure for measuring, recording, and summarizing events. It provides internal control, design to safeguard assets, and promote operational efficiency. And it permits the retrieval of relevant data for internal of inter 
for internal or external reporting so well we can just simply say that actually our knowledge about accounting information system will influence our behavior in accounting field because just as i said before just like the explanation on the slide it is said that in accounting there are a lot of activity that we should do there are a lot of transaction like we have to record summarize analyze and so on and that's um, might be so confusing so that's why we need an information system to help us to make to manage it more efficient more efficiently and also more effectively and after that we also have to know where accountant will work in future it's really important for us to know about these things so actually there are a lot of places that we can work as an accountant as an accountant in the in the future but here i give you three example that most common for accountant to work the first there is business firms and we also can work in not not for profit organization and we also can work in public accounting firms but there are a difference of responsibility in where we uh, work as an accountant just for the example here for if you work in business firms and not for profit organization our responsibility is like for making a design and maintenance of the accounting information system we also have to make a fi financial planning and control and stuff meanwhile in public accounting firms uh, we are have to be considered as an independent person means we are not get influenced from other parties and we also have a responsibility to our clients and of course we have a responsibility to to the external user of publicly reported financial information so actually the main difference here is when we are going to work in public accounting firms we have to make sure that we become an independent person but while we are work in business firms or not for profit organization we just need to focus on our responsibility to make a design of maintenance and stuff just like i said before so that's all for our uh, material in in the first subtopics the next subtopic will be delivered by my friends thank you Now I will start to talk about the behavioral dimension of accounting. So basically, it is part of the non-financial quantifiable information that means to complement the financial data. It is the subfield of accounting that integrates the human behavioral dimension with traditional accounting. So what is the definition of behavioral accounting? So, behavioral accounting, by considering the relationship between human behavior and the accounting system, it reflects the social dimension of an organization and becomes thereby a vital supplement to financial information that accountants currently report. So, by these informations, we can conclude that behavioral accounting is the dimension of accounting concern with human behavior and its relationship with the design, construction, and use of an efficient accounting system information system. The scope of behavioral accounting can be broken down into three general areas. The first one is the effect of human behavior on the design, construction, and use of the accounting system. This area of behavioral accounting is concerned with how the attitudes and philosophies of management affect the, national, the nature of accounting controls and the functioning of the organization. For example, managers who are averse to risk will demand different types of financial control systems than managers who are more inclined to take risks. Thus, the looseness of rigidity of accounting controls are influenced by human behavior. The second one is the effect of the accounting system on human behavior. This area of behavioral accounting is concerned with how the accounting system affects motivation, productivity, decision making, job satisfaction, and cooperation. For example, a budget that is too tight may lead people to believe that the goals are not attainable and that there is no sense in trying to achieve them. A budget that is too loose may result in carelessness and inefficiencies in production. 
The last one is methods to predict and strategies to change human behavior. This third area of behavioral accounting is concerned with how the accounting system can be used to influence behavior. For example, the accounting control structure can be tightened or loosened, compensation plans can be altered, or performance evaluation reports can be modified. Okay, hello everyone, and right now we are going to discuss about the applications of behavioral accounting. So this is a new type of discussion that we're going to have because um, from the very semester that we have, we usually, we only talk about how to manage the numbers that we're going to use in the financial statements and also uh, what kind of uh, cases that we need to apply in our accounting, whether it's a case of a uh, foreign exchange or taxation and such. Now, what is behavioral accounting? Why do, what do they do actually? Why do we need them? I mean, like we are accounting, we are accountants, we simply just make the numbers and something. Why do we need to learn about the behavior? So we, I wanted to make a statement here the, that the accounting products is financial reports. I believe every one of us is agree. Financial reports are used for stakeholders and investors to make, in, to make decisions. It is the information within the report itself that are going to be used for the stakeholders and any other parties to make important decisions. Now, I wanted to make an example, a case example. Company A and B are amazingly similar. Same performance, same earning history, and same market shares. Um, this is quite rare to see, but there is actually a company that is really similar within their products even, like the one that you see right now, Avanza Senia. And yeah, Avanza and Senia, can you really differ them? Back in the days when you are in, in high school or elementary school, they are really look the same. Even the numbers and financial reports will look the same. So the question is, how to differentiate them if you happen to be an investor and you are thinking um, which kind of company that you want to invest if they are looking the same, even the product is the same, whether to invest in Daihatsu that creates Xenia or to invest in Toyota that creates Velos. So this is how the behavioral accounting comes into place. Behavioral accounting simply analyze their cultures. They provide non -inf they provide non financial informations. This is one of the examples that I have found from BHA, BHA Finance in two thousand and twenty. It's about share ownership program by employee and or management. So in BHA Finance. As of 31 December 2020, the, the, com the company does not have any shares ownership program by employee or any other management. So this is a report that you, you usually found in the public financial reports. There's these reports that shows the numbers of shares and also the numbers of financial report. And there's also this kind of description that is non-financial, but it is crucial for the um for the stakeholders and investors to know. Because um, as what we know here from the data from BGA Finance, it shows that the number of ownership program are controlled by the central. It is not owned by the employee, therefore any changes that might the company or maybe the employee will not have any significant changes since they do not have the ownerships of the program. And that is really crucial for the, um, stakeholders and investors to know about this uh, about these information regardless of the financial reports. So this is another example that I wanted to show you how important behavioral accounting is. So I'm strong accounting department are having and getting inefficient in their works due to the company rapid expansion to the new markets and products. So it appears that they keep expanding their product, they keep expanding their program and also expanding their markets. But they um, they do not realize that they need also to expand to expand the accounting department in order to keep up with their expansions, and because of this, they were thinking to have a new accounting information system. But there are some questions to answer first. So, um, in creating a new accounting information system, should they buy a new accounting system, or should or should they make an a new accounting system? Regardless of what they choose, 
they wanted to answer how much the cost to buy one, how much the cost to train the employee, and how long the system will change. How how long does the system change will take effect? No matter what kind of choices that you make, these three questions usually will take place, and you need really need to answer it in order to choose what kind of um, decisions that you need to make. But this is actually the answers, uh, the questions that behavioral accounting can answer. Will they accept the new accounting system? Because as what you know, technology keep changing and the rapid improvement into the uh, new accounting system simply eliminates all the needs for the uh, need for the need of human interference within the accounting system. Like usually there are like 20 people in the accounting department where well, they simply book manually and also ledgering manually. But since the appearance of new accounting system, uh, people are no longer need to ledger themselves on and also to read it, need to write it down in the piece of paper. And that takes a lot of time with the new accounting system. They eliminate the needs and perhaps will create a lot of job loss. So will they accept the new accounting system? This is exactly what the accounting behavioral, behavioral accounting answer. They simply analyze the employee's behavior especially answering these new yellow questions that I show you, how much it costs to train the employee and will they accept the new accounting system, especially on the first questions. How much the cost to train the new employee, whether it's worth it to create or to buy a new accounting system. And that is exactly what kind of um, behavioral accounting simply express and useful within the company. So, that is the applications of behavioral accounting as what we know. Usually we only do the numbers and right now there is a new branch in accounting in order to analyze the behavior within the accounting itself. And it is a very interesting topic to be dwell in. The next is a logical extension of accounting's traditional role. So as we know, one of the users of financial report is decision makers. The decision makers needs information as much as possible in order to make a decision, a better decision. So the information they need is not only financial data, but also non-financial data. And the non-financial data is include behavioral accounting. So according to this, accountants acknowledge this as the full disclosure principle. The full disclosure principle is not only explains and uh, reports about the financial data as I have explained before, but also the non-financial data, the critical one. So later, this information will be stated in framework of the financial statements or not accompanying the statements. So. The behavioral information to supplement the financial data is needed in application of full disclosure principle as I said before. The purpose is to further sharpen the economic picture of a firm. But um, the behavioral information about major business organizations is also the standard fare in the business press. But the problem is the information that provided by business press is not allowing meaningful inter-firm and intra-firm comparison. So, um, the answer for this problem is advanced behavioral sciences already permit more accurate measurement of behavioral processes. It allows accountants to include behavioral dimensions of organizations. But the question is also why accountants would be the most qualified to select behavioral phenomena for investigation because as we know there are more expert people to join in this field like behavioral scientists for example the answer is because I contend they know which behavioral data would most meaningfully supplement to financial data because they have been in this field more than the behavioral scientists like they already know which information would be um, most important or useful for the decision makers in economic field. 
but we also know that accountants are not rigorously trained behavioral scientists so they should consult with competent behavioral science researchers when designing behavioral research projects and analyzing their results so i think that's all i can explain about this the next presentation will be explained by my friend thank you okay with you everyone uh i will explain about the next topic the next topic is about the perspective on human behavior um so there's so many um kind of uh the perspective on human behavior uh which are which they are the the system perspective the rational choice perspective uh social constructive perspective and also the psychodynamic perspective developmental perspective behavioral perspective and the humanistic perspective perspective uh, so i will ex explain one by one a uh, little bit um, the first one is the system perfect perspective and uh, this this perfect perspective sees human behavior at the outcome of reciprocal interaction of person persons oppressing within Lincoln social system it roots are very interdisciplinary in the system perspective the structure of roles has been an important mechanism for maintaining system balance role refers to the usual behavior of person occupying a particular social position the next one is about the conflict pers the conflict perspective this one typically look for source source of conflict and cause of the human behavior in the economic and political uh, arenas and more recently in the cultural arena In sociology, the conflict perspectives has two traditions, uh, which, uh, which they are a utopian tradition that forces a society in which there is no longer a basis for social conflict, and the second one uh, is the tradition that sees conflict as inevitable in social life. The next one is about a uh, rational choice perspective this perspective sees human behavior as a based on self-interest and rational choice about effective ways to accomplish uh, the goals any goals human interaction is seen as an ex exchange of resources, and people make judgments about the fairness of the exchange the this perspective interdisciplinary with strong roots in authoritarian philosophy, economics, and social behaviorism. Social workers are most familiar with the rational choice perspective as, in, as, it, as it is uh, manifested in social exchange theory in social in sociology. Rational choice of model of organization and a public choice theory in political science and the imagining social network theory okay the next one is about social constructionist perspective to understand the human behavior uh, this perspective focuses on how people learn through their interaction with each other to classify the world and their place in it. People as people are seen as social brings who interact with in each other and the tip and the physical world based on shared meanings or shared understanding about the world. 
In this field, people develop their understanding of the world and the themselves from social interaction. And this understanding shape the subsequent social interaction. Okay, uh, the next one is about psychodynamic perspective. This perspective is a uh, consonant always consonant with how internal processes such as such as need needs drives and emotions motivate uh, that may motivate the human behavior so the perfect this perspective has evolved over the years moving from the classical psychodynamic emphasis on innate drives and on Conscious process toward toward greater emphasis on the adaptive capacities on in, of individuals and their interactions with the environment. <coughs> the next one is about the developmental perspective. The focus of uh, this perspective is is on how human behaviors unfolds across. Um, the life course, and also how people change and stay at this, stay the same over time. Human development is seems to occur in clearly uh, defined stage based on a complex interaction of biological, psychological, and social process. Each new text involves new text and brings change in uh, social roles and status. Currently, there are two streams on theorizing in the developmental perspective. One based in psychology and one and the other one based in sociology. Uh, the next one is about the social behavioral perspective. <coughs> The theory in this perspective uh, tell that sometimes tells that sometimes called the social learning perspective um, suggests that human behavior is learned as individuals interact with the, their environment. But uh, and also, but the behavior is disagreed among themselves about the process which by by which behavior is learned and the last one is the humanistic perspective people are using the humanistic perspective to include humanistic parapsychology and existential psychology both of which emphasize the individual's freedom of action and search for the meaning people also extend it to include transpersonal Theory, which focus on the spiritual aspect of human experience, the existential sociology tradition, which present as a dominant dominant them, the idea that people are simultaneously free and constrained, but active and passive agent, and the growing moment of positive psychology. Uh, okay.